The white-footed dunnard, scientific name Smynthopsis leucopus, is a tiny mouse-sized Australian marsupial that feeds mostly on invertebrates and very small reptiles. They're part of the Dasyurid family, of which the largest members are the Tasmanian devil and the tiger quoll. Overall, there are 19 species of dunnards, all of which occur in Australia or New Guinea. The species is found in Victoria, Tasmania and southern New South Wales. And there's a small, recently discovered population of a subspecies in coastal North Queensland. But notice those outlying records in the southwest of Western Australia near Esperance. Amazingly, that's a specimen collected way back in 1846 by French naturalists in Victoria's Murray Sunset National Park and along the McIntyre River on the New South Wales-Queensland border. If these aren't misidentifications, they're a hint that this species range might be wider than is supposed. The lesson is, where there are no trained and astute observers, the presence of a species doesn't get recorded. And here's an interesting fact. The white-footed dunnart wasn't scientifically described and named until 1842, over half a century after European colonisation of Australia's east coast, when the job was done by John Edward Gray, Keeper of Zoology at the British Museum. This tiny, superficially mouse-like marsupial had escaped the notice of European naturalists for decades. The species requires dense, shrubby forest understory or tussock grasslands, sedgeland or wet heath, places supporting lots of insects, small reptiles and frogs for food and that give them cover from predators. White-footed dunnarts mate in summer with the female giving birth in September or October and up to 10 joeys may be delivered. When born they're smaller than a grain of rice. Female dunnarts have a fold of skin on the stomach rather than a fully formed pouch. Hair the young attach themselves to their mother's nipples for a month, then they're suckled in the nest for another month before dispersing. Males succumb to the stress of mating and die when they're about 11 months old, and females don't live long after their young have dispersed. It's unusual for white-footed dunnarts to forage in the daylight hours when they usually shelter in bark nests in hollows, under standing or fallen timber, burrows in the ground, holes left by burned out tree roots, rock crevices or under logging debris. Females typically have an individual range of only 120 square metres, just 11 metres by 11 metres. But males might have a territory 10 times larger, and these overlap with the territories of females. White-footed dunnarts are good climbers and they often move by hopping, which gives them a pretty good chance of catching moths and crickets. Damn, missed that one. But the churned up soil of this lyrebird display mound is a good place to forage for worms and insect larvae. and they're happy to supplement their basic invertebrate diet with a bit of nectar. Dunnarts are sometimes called marsupial mice, and to the untrained eye they look similar to mice. So how do you tell them apart? The common introduced house mouse on the left has a relatively short, blunt snout and, 
Well, Mickey Mouse ears that stick up above the head. The white-footed Dunart has lower, longer, rather human-like ears that end below the level of the eye. And the Dunart has a distinctly conical pointed snout. A glance at the skulls of the two animals shows why that is. Being predators on invertebrates and small vertebrates, the Dunart on the top has a mouthful of ferocious pointed little incisors, canines and molars, adapted to seizing prey and chopping it up. Whereas the mouse below has huge upper and lower incisors and, set well back, blunt molars adapted for a diet of hard seeds. But the introduced house mouse, and also the native mice found within the white-footed Dunnart's range, aren't the only small mammals the Dunnart could be confused with. There's also another small dazurid marsupial whose range overlaps with the Dunnart's and is very similar to it. This is the brown antichinus, scientific name Antichinus stewardi, which is slightly larger than the white-footed Dunnart. These have brown feet and larger ears which have a distinct deep notch at the top and their snouts are somewhat longer. It would be hard to confuse the white-footed Dunnart with the most widespread Dunnart, the fat-tailed, scientific name Smynthopsis crassicordata, whose range might just overlap that of the white-footed Dunnart at the margins. Fat tails are animals of the drier open forest, grassy woodland, farmland, shrubland and desert. They have pointier and much larger ears than the white-footed Dunnart, bigger eyes and bulbous tails where they store fat. If you like this video, please hit that red subscribe button and then the bell icon and you'll be notified of new Wirong Lane videos.